Hi, I'm Colin Poole, the mind behind the music and sound of the College Fade Indie Game Duality. So Duality is a 3D puzzle adventure game developed by a team of 9 people, myself included, over a time span of approximately 3.5 months. It tells the story of a young boy named Atlas who comes from a community of people who live on a series of floating islands and can communicate with the realm of the dead. One day he loses his twin sister in a tragic accident and decides to go and save her using his people's artifact which will allow him to switch between his world and the spirit world. Though Atlas is not alone on this journey, of course. He meets and is accompanied by a spirit named Lucius who guides him towards his goal and teaches him more about his world and the artifact that he carries. Aside from Lucius, there is also a fair variety of different spirit characters that you'll encounter in the spirit world. Some are passive, gentle NPCs who give you lore and information about the world around you. Others are hostile guardians who, with their own unique abilities to impede your progress. My time working on this project and any of the projects I've worked on beforehand have been one of the most interesting and fun experiences I've ever had, to be honest. We all got along fairly well and had some good times, but I won't say it was the easiest road to ride. At the start of it all, it was a little difficult to come up with an initial concept that we could all agree on and at times it felt like we were lagging behind the other team, but eventually we found out that we were up to speed, which was really good for our progress. And since a good number of us had other stuff to deal with, like school, and we weren't used to a schedule to meet up and work on the game, it took a little bit as well for the entire team to like show up and do our thing. But I think the majority of our challenges came from the dynamics of deciding the final vision of our game and everything that would be included in it. Though we all had our own unique careers and specialties for things such as audio, art, and programming, we all had an equal hand and say in shaping duality as a whole. When we would meet, we would all bring forth our ideas for our initial narrative, our characters, the backstories, all that kind of stuff. And I was able to get a lot of my ideas approved, but at the same time, a lot of them were also shouted down, which was a little disheartening, but nothing I couldn't get over. Though still, it wasn't really that easy of a situation to handle, given how chaotic our development was towards the end. Like, a lot of the stuff we came up with initially didn't get decided on and finalized to like, way later. And there were even times that we'd abruptly change gears past the halfway point in our development and start cutting content, and I'm like, dude, this is the initial plan that we had like months ago, and you're just gonna throw it all out the window, especially after we've done the work for some of this stuff already? But a lot of that came from our executive producer, who was the kind of guy who would come in and look at the content of our game, and he's like, yeah, I'm not sure y'all can do this, I'm not sure this is gonna work out, this needs to change, this needs to go, right off the bat with little to no explanation why. Inevitably, we ended up having to cut quite a lot from the final version of Duality. Our initial plan was to have at least five different levels for you to play through, but we ended up cutting it down to three, though we did expand upon them more and flesh them out to give the player more access to exploration to see the beautiful world we created. We also had plans for a couple more spirits for you to encounter as well, one of which was like a giant spider boss for the player to fight towards the end of the game. So those were some of the things that ended up being cut towards the end of our development. I really don't know why all these changes had to happen, especially since we were pumping out so much interesting and creative content right off the bat when we started working on Duality. But overall, I am really proud of the final project and the success that became of it. It was quite a fun little adventure developing the music for Duality, to say the least. The software I use is Logic Pro X, and a lot of the instruments programmed into it already were mainly used for something like a 2D game, and given that this was a 3D game that I was working on, the first ever to be honest, my hands were tied a little bit in that regard. But fortunately I was able to find like a whole bunch of different soundscapes that I could use for ambience, and it perfectly fit the levels that I was working with. Initially, I didn't really know what the final levels were going to look like, so I didn't really have a whole lot of guidance and envision on what they'd sound like. But ultimately, it all worked out for the best, so that's good. Given that this was a game about you switching between two different worlds, I decided to make two different versions for each song that I was making for each level in our game. One for the real world, and one for the spirit world. And they would cohesively switch along with you every time you change worlds. It wasn't really that much of a challenge for me to do this. All I had to do was copy the MIDI data onto different tracks and change up the instrumentation a little bit to make sure both versions were befitting to the world that I was making them for. There are quite a few different sound songs to choose from, and I really wanted to use them all. One of which was this dark chanting I found in the experimental section of Logic, which I used in my personal favorite ambient track, Pirates of Tribulation.
Though, like I stated before, music wasn't the only thing I was working on. I was also in charge of doing the sound and duality as well. Given her game's fantastical, ethereal, and maybe even alien nature, I ended up making a lot of sound effects and logic, and even finding some stuff on the dark web. I'm just kidding about that part, I went to the royalty free sites everyone knows about, but I was serious about making a good amount of the stuff and logic. I used synthetic instruments that didn't really sound like music at all for stuff like attack sounds or ambience, especially in regards to what was in the spirit world. One of the best parts about what I was doing for this project was deciding on what everything would sound like and being able to go the extra mile if I wanted to or needed to. The spirit creatures, for example, I decided to give them their own unique voices. Aside from my main music and sound role, I also had some hand in narrative and I was able to decide what the spirits would be called and what their lore would be given their specialties from our initial concept. Take the guardian spirits, for example. They are called Shugovazians. Their names are a mishmash of Japanese and Kurdish words meaning guardian. Like the levels themselves, I wasn't really given much clue on what the spirits themselves would look like. So for the guardian spirits, I, I initially imagined them looking like these huge golem creatures with this deeper sounding voice, so that's what I went for initially. So what I did was pull up Google Translate, translate things I believe they say to Japanese just to give a variety within a different language. I speak what was translated in Japanese, and then I take that audio file that I recorded of myself, put it in logic, reverse the audio, I felt like reversing the audio would be a key sound aesthetic for the spirit's voices, given that, that their spirit world was the opposite of the real world, in a sense, and I'd alter my voice to sound exactly what I believe it would sound like. Kyokaya Shinsoku sa it was the same kind of deal that we had for the other spirits before they were cut. The two that bore this fate were the heroes Skuga and the Altuki's Mirnok. Like the Shugo Vasi, and it took a little bit before I saw the initial concept art for the hero Skuga. It was a hostile enforcer that had the power to switch you between worlds automatically. And I initially imagined it being some sort of winged gargoyle-like creature, so I went with something kind of deep demonic for its voice. I christened it from a variety of foreign languages from the United Kingdom, meaning ghost. The Optoki's Mirnok was our spider spirit. Its name is a mishmash of Romanian and Hungarian words meaning eight-eyed architect. I never really saw any concept art for it because it ended up being cut and we never could really sit down with it all that often. But I initially imagined it looking like one of the Monster Hunter monsters, like Nursilla or newcomer Rakna Kadaki. Given that spiders use vibrations, I figured that this one should sound somewhat robotic, so when I was putting my voice through logic, I added some roboticization filters and synths. And just in case I wasn't clear before, the language I used in each of their voices was based off of what language I used in naming them. So, the Optakis Mirnok spoke in Romanian, the Shukovasian spoke Japanese, and the Hiroskuga spoke in Gaelic and the Lost Spirits, which are called the Tejado Muerto, spoke Spanish and Latin, and all of them were like reversed and filterized to give them their own unique voice. I did this for every single spirit character, including Lucius, who is one of our main characters. Sail and touch I can. naive. Nu ai puete fit nixiotata migresit abad naitset asti. But I couldn't leave the voice work with just the spirits. I had to make sure Atlas and his sister had their own voices as well. So what I did was ask for help from colleagues of mine. Jesse Zhu, who is the voice for Atlas. I he is also our lead programmer and he made sure everything was put together properly and played out the way it was supposed to. And I also got someone from a previous project that I worked on, Grace Carter, the voice, Atlas's sister, and she did a stellar job. It was like having warm coconut oil in my ears listening to the work that she did. It was, it was astounding, really. And I'm really glad I got to
to work with them. And I'm really glad I got to work with the entirety of my team as well. Working on the music and sound work of duality as a whole was definitely one of the best experiences that I'll ever have in a career. But doing the voice work and, say, composing the final boss song for this game were definitely the best parts in my opinion. And with that, I hope you all enjoy getting a behind the scenes look at duality from my perspective. And I would also like to personally thank the team members and colleagues that I worked with on this project and the previous projects before. It was really a fun experience getting to know you guys and working with y'all. And you guys made some awesome stuff. Al, your design on the spirit world, especially its skybox, was just lit. I really enjoyed the auroras. Travis, you made some amazing environmental art. Val, you did a good job with the characters and their designs and concepts, and I really liked the minor Kingdom Hearts look you added to each and every single one of them. I'm not sure if that's really what you're intending, but if you look at it in a certain fashion, you can definitely see that. And I also enjoyed having you as our team leader, Ian, and thank you, Jesse, Jeshua, Jalen for your remaining art and programming that you did on this game and I am looking forward to hopefully working with y'all some more one day and I'm not sure if it's possible but I would like you the audience to know that it seems like we are still updating and expanding on duality a little bit more like we have plans for an expansion bonus level and some extra finishing touches that we weren't really able to get in before or the release of our game so with that I will see you all around. Peace. Wow.